Hi there, my Zella. This is Joshua coming at you today. How are you doing? Pleasure to meet you. Again, we'll see you. We talk a lot. It's okay. Welcome back. So, um, I've started to realize that a lot of things on this channel are going to have to be redundant. There's just no way. But as I continue forward, I'm going to just have to just repeat the things that I think are interesting or important because nobody watches my old videos anyway. So I'll just make new ones and you can watch the old... The, and the thing is, is I get older and I start understanding it better. I have better explanations. And so it's not necessarily redundant as it were, but whatever. We'll just go with what we've got. Uh, so today I'm going to cover the resurrections. Um, and when I say resurrections, I mean that there are multiple resurrections. And when you ask a Christian, like, how many resurrections are there? They usually say, what? And they think about like, how many people have been resurrected. I'm like, no, no, no. How many prophesied resurrections are there in the scripture? How many different resurrections are prophesied according to what the Bible says? Well, <clears throat> a lot of people are like, well, Jesus Christ was prophesied. I'm like, yeah, that's right. And I'm like, yeah. And then uh, we all come back at the lake of fire, right? And I'm like, yeah. And we all get judged. I'm like, yeah, that's two. Okay, so there's two different resurrections. And they're like, yeah. I'm like, okay. So what about... The one where we ascend into the heavens with the voice of the shout of the archangel and the trump of God and the dead in Christ shall rise first and we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them with the clouds that shall be with the Lord. And they're like, huh? And I'm like, well, this is when we are ascending into the heavens. We are leaving the planet. We just say bye. And then, but not everybody in this one is dead, right? And they're like, yeah. I'm like, okay. So there's a separate one. So when you break it down, so the, the concepts are this, that Jesus Christ died for our sins. And because he died for our sins, that gives us a concept of everlasting life. Let me turn up the light a little bit in here. Let it be light. Um, so that there's this concept of everlasting life. When Jesus Christ died for our sins, we can now live immortality. I don't think that's a word, but I just made it up. So coining it. Um, as we move forward, though, we have to realize that just because it, when depending on which era or dispensation that we are in and die in or get raised through, that we will be guaranteed a different resurrection. And that's true throughout the Gospels, or throughout the entire book of the Bibles. So the way it works is this. From, from the beginning of Adam all the way up until the last resurrection, Everybody has the opportunity of the resurrection of the unjust or final judgment as it is called. And this final judgment is everybody, la di da -di, everybody gets raised from the dead. And if you're a good person, you get everlasting life. And if you're a bad person, you get thrown into like a fire. That is the one that everybody knows. And that applies to everybody. Okay. Now, moving forward from the time of Abraham. <coughs> all the way to the time of Jesus Christ, there is a select group of people called the 144,000. Now, these 144,000 are special because they are not defiled by women. And if we look in here, it talks about it in Matthew 22, 30, Mark 12, 25, and Luke 20, 35 through 36. And it talks about how the Jews, specifically the Jews, are not being, they are not defiled by women. That these 144,000 will not be married, nor will they be given in marriage. And that's from the time of Abraham to the time of Jesus Christ, okay, and to the ascension of Jesus Christ. Those are the only options available to you. Now, after Jesus Christ dies for your sins and gets raised from the dead, now we have the ability after the blood covenant that we took with Jesus Christ. Now we have the ability to become sons of God as Jesus Christ is a son of God. This is the big game. This is the big show right now. We have the ability to be spiritual royalty. All right. Now, all it takes is for us to be from the point of Jesus Christ ascension to his descension. Okay. So as he ascends, then he descends from that time to that time. Anybody that finds the straight and narrow path gets to become sons of God. <clears throat> and they, well, not, not all of them will be dead. Some of them will be raised from the dead. Yes, most of them will be raised from the dead. But those that endure till the very end, they will be raised up physically and then they will ascend into the heavens. And there are references to this. 
um, there are multiple references, and it's in uh, there's uh, there's one in Matthew nineteen twenty eight um, where it talks about this, and also talks about it in Thessalonians this resurrection uh, where not everybody's alive. I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep that are, you sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even even so also that sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. With the voice of the shout of the archangel and the trump of God, the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. All right. So we will have this everlasting life as sons of God, as kings and queens, if you're a female, queens, I'm assuming. Uh, so the kings and queens, and then we'll be ascending into the heavens. And then after that point, then there will be a new era or a new dispensation. And that is from the point where Jesus Christ ascends into the heavens and takes his sons with him. Then there will be a period of tribulation and there will be a lot of death during that tribulation. It says a third of the world's population is going to die from um, it, just from straight up death from war, pestilence, and famine. Okay, the four horsemen of the apocalypse. Now, during this era, there are going to be those people that will be beheaded for Christ's sake, and they will be beheaded because they refuse to take the mark of the beast and in their hand and in their head. Those people that refuse to take the mark of the beast in their hand and in their head, these are the these are the the multitude. These are the ones that endure a tremendous amount of persecution, and they all get beheaded. And these are those that were the priests. These are the ones that will be after. So they get they get slicked, and then the sons of God who left. Jesus Christ comes down, and the armies which follow him upon white horses, clothes and fine linen, light and clean. And they come back, and then we fulfill the prophecies in Joel chapter two, and we just kick butt and take names. And then and once we once we lay waste to the nations and those that submit, we we give we pardon, and those that refuse to humble themselves, they get destroyed. Then there is a period of peace, a thousand years of peace, and at that thousand years of peace, then we raise up that multitude, that vast multitude, and they get raised up from the dead, and they become as priests. And then at the end of that thousand years of peace, then the 144,000 come back to life. And then we they are those that serve Christ. And as we've talked about this before, uh, the 144,000 that serve Christ, those are like eunuchs. And then the females would probably be as like concubines because that is the female equivalent of a eunuch. And then after that, then after that, then you have what is known as the resurrection of the uh the unjust or the gathering or the um the resurrection of the unjust or the uh, the final judgment and during this final judgment people get judged according to the works and if they were humble and if they repented of their sins and then they said i didn't know uh please forgive me then they get resurrection and then they are they have the lowest caste and then it'll go from jesus who is the messiah down to the the kings who is jesus christ is the king of kings and then there'll be the, the kings, and then there'll be the priests, and then there'll be the 144,000. And then you'll have underneath the 144,000, this wide swath of people who are like the serfs. And then that's it. Those are the people that are righteous. And so it'll, and this is the thing, and depending on where you are at any given time, will you have this thing? So after we raise the 144,000 from the dead, then there'll be the nations that we, that refuse to, that humbled themselves initially and repented of their sins. They will then rebel again against God and God will say enough is enough and he slicks them off the planet and then they all get brought back to life and they get judged according to their works. I like to put this out here because it's a really important subject matter for us to know as Christians. I find the vast majority of Christians out there have no idea how many resurrections they are. I mean, you look at Jehovah's Witnesses and they're very confused because they honestly think that there's only 144,000 to get raised from dead. There are so many more resurrections than just the 144,000. Just, I know it's hard to get your head around, but you got to get your head around it. So I put this out here as kind of a way to enlighten people. You want to know the fullness of God's word? You want to know the full scope of God's knowledge and ability and what he plans for us? Realize that there's just far more than just this one resurrection or two resurrections. There are five resurrections. Jesus Christ, the kings, 
the um, okay, the, the Jesus Christ, the kings, the priest, the 144,000, and then the judgment, final judgment where everybody gets judged. Five resurrections. So anyway, I hope this blesses you. You know I love God because I love virtue, justice, and salvation. Uh, have a pleasant day. Please love and grooviness. And yeah, come on back next time. Don't forget to click the dingy thingy and subscribe because, you know, I really can't do live streams unless I get 1,000 subscribers. So I'm going to make that a goal. I'm going to say let's get 1,000 subscribers on here so that way we can go back to live streaming because I don't like it when they change these parameters. So I'm going to try and put out more content and, and uh, try and get back in the game. All right? Take it easy. Bye.